Hey friends, it's Matt Tommy. Welcome inside the Basket Maker Studio. I am super excited to have a longtime friend of mine, Katie Grove, here with me, who is not only an incredible basket maker, but just all around great artist. And Katie, welcome. So glad you're here with me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. And I'm excited to share the basket journey with you all. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm for those that don't know, I'm rolling back the tape years ago when I got this email from somebody from New York saying, can I come down to your studio and, <laughs> and intern and, and, and connect and all this and take my journey to the next level? And um, man, we had such a great time getting to know each other over the months that, that you were in my studio and you have just absolutely taken off uh, from there. So let everybody know kind of who you are, where you're from, what you do creatively, and then we'll kind of jump into some of your, your backstory. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just must say those were such fun times. Indeed. I had such a great, <laughs> such a great winter that uh, it feels like so, so long ago, but it, it was definitely it. extremely, you know, helpful in my, in my learning um, process and, in, you know, learning to split kudzu, very exactly. valuable skill. Exactly. I split a lot of kudzu. <laughs> exactly. um, well, a little bit about me. My name is Katie Grove. I live in the Hudson Valley of New York State from Pennsylvania originally. I'm in a beautiful, beautiful forest here near the Rondout Creek. And I have my home and studio on this, on this land. I um, make a living teaching basket classes, mostly out of the studio. Uh, sometimes I'll travel to different venues, but uh, silver lining of COVID was everything shut down. So I basically had to teach out of my backyard and yeah. it went great. Lots of signups. And I decided that I never want to leave my house again. That was <laughs> some good things came out of COVID for sure. That's right. Um, it's like, I saw that on Facebook the other day. Somebody said introverts unite separately. And I'm like, I totally, <laughs> totally relate to that. <laughs> oh yeah. That sounds just perfect. Exactly. So yeah, that's that's a bit about me. I'm also a fine artist. I, I do a fair amount of um, not only using basketry techniques in sculptural ways, but painting, drawing, honestly, anything I can get my hands on, I will use to make art. Yeah, yeah. Now, so many of us are are self-taught in the things that we come from, but I, I know you you've you've got the self-taught side, but you've also got a legit art background as well. Mm -hmm. So. Did you grow up, I mean, we all grew up, I guess, creative, but we, you know, creative family, and then you went to art school and all that. So how did that begin to evolve for you? Did you always know that you were going to be a, a pro artist or? I just always knew. I think that, I think that everyone is, is born with things that they're just innately just ready for in their life, like meant, meant to do really. And, yeah. and many people are not lucky enough to have the the support or the time or the just space in their life to figure that out. And I was lucky that I was just born knowing I was going to be an artist all through elementary school and, and high school, just art was, it was really my calling. And so I, I did go to art school and I, you know, became an artist. Most of my like financial support comes from teaching classes, but mm -hmm. I still do maintain a, try to maintain a studio practice. And right now I'm actually in a uh, grad school program, which is a two year low residency program called NOMAD, uh, Interdisciplinary MFA. It's through the University of Hartford in Connecticut. And it's, we meet in person twice a year. And I just, I wanted something to reestablish my studio practice and mm -hmm. also to have the ability to teach at a college level because yeah. you get students for longer and they're more dedicated, yeah. which is always what I want in, my, in all my classes. That's so great. You know, when I, when I think about you, if somebody says, Katie Grove, what do you think about? I, the word that was coming to me this morning was curious because <laughs> you are, you're just a curious spirit in that you are <laughs> always out in the woods or paddling through something or what did you just make a boat recently? I mean, you're just yes. like, I, I think I found a picture of you on Facebook, not long, it was maybe a couple of summers ago and you were like laying in a thing of cattails or, or like that. So oh yeah. You are like the full real deal experience. So what is it about the natural world? I mean, were you like passionate about the natural world and curious about that before you ever found basketry? And how did the whole basketry thing come in to, to your life? Um, 
Yes, I I was always born. I was just born curious. That's a really good word for me. I, I like that you said that. Yeah. Um, being in nature and being outdoors was something that was always really important to me as a kid and as a young adult, just playing in the mud and being in the woods. And I think most kids have that that in them and again, not all get a chance to experience it. So yeah. as I went through my through art school and I'm doing different techniques and materials, basketry was really just this converging path of my my love of nature, natural materials, just being in, in the world and my love of making things, just crafting and making stuff with my hands and then sharing it with people. That's kind of the last of the three important things to me. And that's where the teaching and the classes come in. Kate, I totally, you know, relate to what you're saying about being in the natural world and just kind of that being in your heart. I think for me, the reason I started doing baskets was not necessarily baskets. It was just kind of an excuse to, to get in the woods and, and having grown up in Boy Scouts and running around the woods, it was like, I can make something out of this. Like, this is really cool. <laughs> so, I think those of us with, with itchy fingers, if we stay in the woods long enough, we were always finding ourselves putting something together and eventually you're like hey with a couple of techniques I can actually 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 do something with it that, that's pretty cool exactly yeah I think you know it, it was funny the other day I was well actually last fall I was cleaning out my garden and everything and Tanya was just laughing at me she's like what are you doing and I would I had gone from clipping the the foliage on the daylilies to actually sitting on the ground and then I was grabbing <laughs> daylily foliage and then I was weaving and she was like what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm doing what, what we do. We do, we're basket makers. We just, we just make stuff like that. That's how it is. So do you find that even though you're a, a full-time maker and that sort of thing, are you still finding yourself just down a path or, or in the woods and just, just piddling with something just because that's still what you love to do? Oh yeah, definitely. In fact, with, um, with harvesting, because I have to harvest a lot of materials for myself, but also for teaching classes, it would be, it would be economical for me to have an assistant or hire yeah. someone. And I, I do often have someone come out and help me, but I always make sure I have plenty of time just by myself harvesting, even though, I don't know, from a business standpoint, it's not a great use of time. It's absolutely the best way to spend my time and yeah. just so rejuvenating and revitalizing every time I'm out there. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I would just so echo that because I think there's always, I mean, you know, me, I'm so passionate about the business and helping artists grow in their business and all that sort of thing. But it's like, I think when I look back on my own basketry career and having had assistance and, you know, a big commission business and, and all that sort of thing, I think the times when, when I look back and felt dry, internally and felt mm -hmm. like I was just kind of becoming a machine you know it was it was always 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 related to my inability or unwillingness whatever you want to say to mm -hmm. to be harvesting myself and be in the in the woods and I think it's those mm -hmm. times of just going back intentionally and being in the place that we we get inspiration I mean that's you just can't you can't outsource inspiration and I think that's <laughs> I mean, so it, isn't that true? We have to be in the woods, so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, talking about materials, you know, I know that you are, again, curious about lots and lots of different materials and uh, love to, like I do, harvest things that are in your local area. So talk about some of the things that maybe we're seeing behind you and what are the things that you're, um, <laughs> that you're primarily harvesting in, in your basketry, you know, world? All right, so tons of stuff. Um, a lot of vines, grapevine, bittersweet, akebia. There's there's a lot of vines around me. Uh, I do a fair amount of work with um, different inner barks of trees. Mm -hmm. Basswood is my favorite, my favorite tree, and one of my favorite materials. We have um, American elms that are that are around. We have uh, tulip, tulip poplar, black walnut. I try to work with things that are already being cut down for another reason when it comes to trees. I work sure. with a couple of arborists and landscapers and just everyone around me in my community knows that if a tree falls down, call Katie and maybe she'll come and give you some free landscaping. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What else? Uh, cattails, a lot of garden plants. You mentioned iris, daylilies, uh -huh. um, cattails. I just have to look around and there's 
there's so much, but at the heart of it is things that are often, you know, being cut down already or just harvesting in a way that's not going to leave the environment and the landscape worse, worse than I found it. Like yeah. if I have one tiny little cattail plant, I'm not going to harvest that plant. I'm going to find a place where there's acres of it and harvest yeah. from there. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. A long yeah. answer for the short answer, which is everything. No, I know. I get it. Well, I think that's just kind of the nature of basketry, right? We're scroungers kind of by nature. We like to, oh, yeah. you know, oh, find yeah. those things that, that nobody else uses. But I, I mean, I've always thought that's just the beautiful redemptive purpose of basketry is that we can take things mm. that nobody else likes and and turn it into, into beautiful things. And I know people ask me all the time, and, and you mentioned relationship, but, you know, a mm. lot of times when people are thinking about basketry and harvesting things, you can't just go tromping out on other people's land and that sort of thing really learning to develop relationships like with the people you're talking about is I mean that's just the core of of, of mm. being a at least a professional basket maker is having enough supplies because you know you don't always have it the ability to grow everything on your land or whatever and so having those relationships is is key isn't it yeah it's so important it's it's it is about relationship and not just with the people, but with the, with the land and the plants themselves. That's really, really at the heart of my, my practice is relationship with, with the land, the plants, the people. And every time I'm out there and I'll often do that when you're talking about being in the, in the garden and doing landscaping and then beginning to weave, sometimes I'll be out harvesting vines. And then all of a sudden I realize I'm not harvesting vines for basketry anymore. I'm like trying to free a, a poor little cherry tree that's being trapped by bittersweet. And it, it becomes like a stewarding of, of the landscape. And, and I'm lucky to have many relationships with, with local landowners, friends that uh, let me come and just do my thing on their land. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I was just talking to a, a painter friend of mine who's a, a watercolorist and you'd appreciate this as a, a painter as well, but he was, he saw somewhere that had these old airplanes, like an airplane graveyard. And mm. he was kind of going up to the fence and looking and all the guys came out like, you can't be here, you know, all this kind of stuff. And he pulls out his sketchbook and he's like, I'm an artist. They're like, sure, you're an artist. He's like, no, legit, like I'm an artist. And, and, be <laughs> and before long, they invite him in. And now he's got this incredible relationship where he can oh. go in this airplane graveyard and he's painting incredible, you know, pieces of, of all these airplane parts and just really cool watercolor stuff. But I'm like, you know, he could have just cut and run or tried to sneak up there, but it is developing that relationship over time. That's, that's great. So yeah. It you helps may, me get out of my introvertedness for sure. I know it. I know it. I did it the wrong way for a lot of years. I mean, I I remember, you may remember me telling this story, but I, one of the places that I've harvested kudzu for years, I had gone way back on this country road. Nobody was there ever. And one day I was out there at the beginning of what I would call kudzu season. And this big white suburban pulls up and they're like, can I help you, son? I'm like, oh no, what is it? And the, if this is the guy that owned like hundreds of acres right there, you know, and I had been on his land all this time. But he was like, come back to my house and I'm, I'll put you on the gator. And when he took me and showed me all this kudzu, he's like, you can have it all. And I was like, yes, finally, I'm legit. Like, this is really <laughs> Yeah. It's good. It's really worth it. It's worth it. I mean. <laughs> yeah, <great>. absolutely. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking about the other work that you do, Katie, and, um, you know, when you were here uh, working with us for a while, I know you were doing those uh, feathers and, and all these mm. kind of beautiful paintings and that sort of thing. So talk about, you know, how your basketry and the natural world, mm. how that's kind of flowing in, because there is this sort of symbiotic relationship of, of what you're doing in fine art versus fine craft that that you're doing. And, and it's all your unique voice, if you will, but it's just different expressions. So. Yeah, that's really, that's really true. I mean, whether it's the watercolor paintings, which I've been, I haven't painted many feathers for, for a while, but I have been doing some larger paintings, which I can send over your way Yeah. Um, of um, like plants, animals, kind of like a collage, a collage feel. I've been working with clay for the first time. Um, and these are pieces that are merging fibers and ceramics. So I'll, I'll make a, like a, a recent one was a ceramic arm. So it's a yeah. very realistic looking arm. And then out of the center of it is cut a slice from which um, some sweet grass is braided and the sweet oh, grass cool. kind of emerges from the, from the arm. So they're, they're all about people plant relationship really in a way. 
um, yeah, at the heart of it is that it's it's me figuring out my place in the world and thinking about the the bigger themes that we as human beings encounter and live through our lives with um, being on on this earth and on the land. Yeah. And then some of it's pretty direct. Like uh, I'll do a little tour later of some of the stuff I'm doing for my grad school program. And I'm looking up because one of the pieces is very tall <laughs> in front, right in front of me. But that's it. taking traditional materials and techniques and using them in a sculptural experimenting way. I've, I've given myself permission to explore with this uh, with this grad school program for sure. Yeah, that's so good. Because when I think about the work that you've done primarily in basketry, you are very passionate, it seems, about functional kind of work. So are, are you enjoying going into kind of this more sculptural way of, of weaving? Yeah, yeah. I think for, for many, many years, for probably the majority of my basketry career, it's just been just experimenting, like figuring out what are my materials? What are my ways of working? How do I actually like to use this material? And that involved making a lot of functional things or just figuring out how to manipulate the materials in a way that, that I like. And I, I think I didn't even start making my art with basket, like my art with basket materials until maybe two, two years ago, two mm -hmm. or three years. So it's pretty, it's pretty new, but it, feel, it felt like I really had to take those steps first to yeah. become become accustomed to just to figure it out yeah absolutely and just kind of learn where your voice is and what you're what you're drawn to and I I remember having done rib baskets for for so long and then when I moved to Asheville and started experimenting kind of sculpturally and these undulating forms and all that and it was funny because you spent your I spent all these years trying to make baskets the correct way quote unquote and then it was like <laughs> anything that I would do that was wonky or crooked or on a stick or, or whatever. Everybody was like, Oh my gosh, this is, it's so great. More sticks, you, more sticks. <laughs> you gotta find this permission, if you will, to, you know, with the market, you know, to, to make things that people are attracted to and it gives you more freedom. So I just, I love yeah. that. I love your studio space. If, if we can, I'd love to see what's, what's going on. Yeah. And uh, if, if you don't have a messy studio, we know you're not really an artist, right? So we it's messy right now. So <laughs> Yeah, there's no like uh, magazine photos being taken in here at this moment. I know. So are you, in, so is your studio space in your house or do you have another separate building there on, on site or what is it? Um, it is a, it is a large garage oh, and then cool. I live in a small apartment above the large garage. So oh, how it works nice. out That's awesome. perfectly. It's, it's my space. So I don't have to commute far to, to work on, do my work, but it's a little bit of separation. It's not like the plants are in my living room anymore, exactly. which they were for many, many years. Exactly. I totally relate to that. My yeah. wife, Tanya, she said, I'm the only woman in North Carolina that has kudzu in her sink. And I'm like, I know, but it's... <laughs> The way it's it is, right? So, so great, yes. Uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah so, so walk us around and tell us what what is what's going on. All right. So I'm gonna flip my camera, and you yeah, just cool. tell me if I'm moving too uh, too fast. I'm gonna. Oh, I'll start right. at the door. So I'm gonna take us over to the door because it's fun to enter the studio as if you were here. That's right. And maybe I'll do outside first. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, how beautiful! So I've got my yard here nice picnic table and I have most of my classes just right out here that is awesome chopping wood for the uh, the wood stove wood stove love that and maybe I'll back up and give you the, uh, the building too I love the greens too that's beautiful I know it's great so it's just a big barn style garage how awesome. The basket mobile often filled with, uh, it was filled with willow yesterday coming out the windows, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Tis right. the season right here in the wintertime. It's time to get out and, and get it. So. Oh, yeah. It's the last minute, really. Okay. So studio. Love it. Love it. A bunch of storage back there. Wood stove. There's also regular heat, but the wood stove is so very cozy. Yeah. And then materials. I try to have just stuff everywhere got vines barks biggest basket ever that Look one of my students that. gave me she got it at a someone got it at a yard sale and gave it to her and what do you do with something like that you give it to katie <laughs> exactly i love it do you know what it's made out of is it a vine basket or you know i really think it's split wisteria that's my that's what i think it is yeah cool, cool. yeah 
Oh, maybe I'll take some up close pictures of you. It has a little bit of a kudzu resemblance, but yeah. I, I, I think it's wisteria. Yeah. And all your barks there on the on the barks on the wall. A lot of akebia. It's getting to be akebia season. It's a uh -huh. favorite of mine that I'm going to go get some stuff soon. Beautiful. Got my little basket of library going on. Nice. And then I'll show you my my big one. Uh, it's, it doesn't show up very well in this situation, but it is a. I've been exploring ancestry and uh -huh. ideas about evolution, and so wow. this is a large sculpture that's in the shape of like a DNA double yeah. helix, uh -huh. and it's using materials that are both native to where I live now on the East Coast and also were used by my own ancestors in Europe hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago, who knows how long. Wow. Cattails, basswood, birch bark. And Can as it close to that, I'd love to see that. I know everybody wants yeah. to see that. Way over here. Let's see if I can get a nice. Oh yeah, that's cool. So here is wow. Where's my camera? There we go. There you go. Yeah. Birch bark. How cool. And then I let it sort of transform into basswood, which that's my really my favorite material. Yeah. And I think that on the floor it will unravel into all of the unprocessed materials so it'll be mm -hmm. as if it grows from those unprocessed materials into this finished state yeah i love it i'm thinking of my friend carissa brock out in uh out west who does work with um uh you know bamboo you ought to she, her work is she loves to do all these kind of crazy shapes and everything it's, it's so beautiful so yeah, i love it i love that hey you're having too yeah. much fun oh I always try to have too much fun. That's the best way to live life. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, hey, listen, I know folks are going to want to connect with you for in-person classes and for purchasing your work and all that kind of stuff. So I know you're all over the place on online, but where's the best place they can connect with you on maybe your website, social, that sort of thing? So Yeah, yeah. Website is a great place. It's uh, katiegrovestudios.com. I'll send you a link. And then I think Instagram is also katiegrovestudios. Awesome. And um, Facebook is is the same. So all three of those, you know, sometimes I'm more active than others on the <laughs> social media, but I did just update my website with a couple of a couple of classes. I'm not teaching as much as I usually do mm -hmm. this year because of uh, the, I'm graduating in June from this uh, from this grad school program. So nice. I took off the spring and have to say no to a lot of requests, unfortunately, yeah. but I'll be back at it in July. That's for sure. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on today. If you had one tip to kind of leave an emerging maker who's thinking, I would love to do this kind of stuff, but I'm just, I'm just starting out on, on my journey. Uh, what would you say to them as, as you encourage an artist today? Oh, man, um, I would say just don't be afraid to try things. I get a lot of people that ask, is this material good? Is that material good? Right. And the, the best person to answer that is it's you by going out with your own hands and just, just trying it and to not be discouraged if things don't end up absolutely perfect because it's that learning and just, just try it. And if it doesn't work, try it again in a month or two. Maybe the material has changed with the season. Just don't be afraid to try. Yeah, that's so good. I always tell people, just throw it in a pot and boil it and see what happens, you know? <laughs> yeah, add water. Hot water is your best friend. That's right. That's right. So, well, That's Katie, really it's been a joy start. to connect with you again, my friend, and um, all the best to you in all that you're doing. Guys, definitely go to the, the link that's right here in the show notes so that you can connect with Katie on social, on her website, invite her to teach, buy her work, take a class, do all the things uh, to support the great work that she's doing. So thanks, Katie. It's been, it's been great. Thank you so much. This has been really fun to connect with you and get to share a little bit of this. And I look forward to listening to all of the other artists as well. Absolutely.